at Edinburgh. This is where Frank and Peter are going to be sitting. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So good, she's good. been super excited. It's all yeah. beautiful. And yeah. you, you've obviously got a busy day ahead of you now. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we're here for two days. Um, so yeah, it's. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to go anywhere else? Are you gonna... Well, do you know we had a walk around Edinburgh last night? Because I've been quite a few times. Um, and I think it'll take her a few hours to come down after today. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Um, I got some presents for you. Um, I went last year to a lovely little village on the way of Cooking and Cooking. I want you to have this. The railway station that you've been learning to oh pronounce. My <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, I need my glasses. Put these in the zip pocket. Okay. Wow. Can you say it, Amber? Come by with a wingy pocket if you want to let us see your One more time. Come by with a wingy pocket. <laughs> that was fabulous. I know, yeah. Oh my god. Can you say it? I cannot say it, no. no. How long did it take you to memorize it? Um, it's only a week. A week? That might have been a Thank you so much. That's a girl who doesn't take you to She's paid to do a picture as well, so she's going to give you the picture when the queue dies down, if that's okay. Ah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you for being here and being so enthusiastic. Peter, how are you? Pleasure. Nice how are you? Yeah. How was your journey? Yeah. Yeah? That was Edinburgh. Sorry? How was Edinburgh? Enjoying Edinburgh? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. You betcha. No. You betcha. I'm enjoying your single malt whiskeys too. <laughs> Favorite. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get your work. So, I'm saying, I'm going to Hi, Jodie. Hi. Um, what can we do for you? Um, I was wondering if I could give Jodie a piece of art. 
as big as we can. I was going to say, because the smallest might just thought it would be a nice time to come out. Yeah. Let us see it then. Alright. Um, oh, so you're an artist? Yeah. to invite you up to the microphones now if you have a question and I did promise Amber who's sitting front row give it up for Amber everybody she is such a fan of these two and of course Frank just met her before Amber would you like to be our first question of the day all right yes please yes please um hi Frank hi Peter hello Amber hello um I was wondering uh Frank for you quickly what was it like working with Elvis on the trouble with girls in the 60s wow uh love the question and um, it was an amazing, amazing event for me because I was a big Elvis fan growing up. And he wasn't that old when I worked with him, but I was just, you know, like this was one of the first films I worked with, with or did actually, and worked with him. But when I met him, uh, we never got a chance to rehearse and we did a scene on film. So they said, you know, Elvis is coming. We don't have a lot of time to rehearse. Here's what you do. You pick up the suitcases, you go up the stairway, and then Elvis will follow you, and then we'll, that will be the scene. So we'd never even had a chance to say hi to him, and there was this little square about eh, from here to here to here to here, and four of us and Elvis. So we're going up these stairs and going up these stairs, and he's right behind me, and all of a sudden the door opens, and Elvis... He was right there. Oh, my gosh. It was so amazing. And he looked fantastic. He'd just gotten back from Hawaii. He had jet black hair. He had a burgundy blazer, gray pants. Anyway, he looked fantastic. For seven weeks, I got to work with him. And the first week, we were just, everybody was in awe. The second week, we started playing football at lunch. You know, and that's the kind of guy he was. He was really, really, really nice guy. <clears throat> and a lot of fun. And he liked my choking dog. The producer said, hey, Elvis, Frank does a lot of noises and sounds, and he does these dogs. Would you like to hear him? Yeah, man, I'd like to hear that. 
Let's hear those double sounds, right? Okay, um, uh, old dog in the morning. Dog with a flea. Dog choking on a flea. That was his favorite. And he says, hey, Red, man, you got to check us out. This guy does a choking dog, man. It's unbelievable. Check it out. Thank you, Amber. You're welcome. Yes. Can I quickly ask Peter Thank a question you. as well, just real quick? Yes. Uh, Peter, uh, I know not a lot of people ask you this, but you were the voice of Murky Dismal in Rainbow Bright. I'm not sure if anyone remembers it, but I was wondering what was it like to work on that because you did, like, a unique voice for Murky. It was fun. Uh, I, I was doing... Uh, take off of a, an American uh, comedian named Jackie Gleason. And uh, he did a character called, I think it was Reginald Van Gleason. And you, how sweet it is. <laughs> and um, Dismal, Murky Dismal's. Uh, well, I don't know. His sidekick was, was somebody always fouling up. And so I always had the opportunity to go, You are so stupid. <laughs> Boy, that's right. I, don't... <laughs> Boy, I haven't done Fraley. that in years. Thanks, Amber. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> yeah, that was Lurky voiced by Pat Fraley. He was the sidekick in the show. Lurky, the little... Pat, Pat Fraley, one of my favorite people in the world. Yeah. And uh, we say hi to Patrick. Wish he were here. Wish he were here. We'll do a pass on that message. Hope yes. so. Thank you both. Thank you, Amber. Great question. Thank you, Amber. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pop. <laughs> he will return and conquer the earth. We will take hold of the universe. Well, uh, I only did probably maybe three or four shows with the entire cast, and then we were all kind of individually working. And especially now, now you do everything by yourself. But uh, I did this old reporter from Los Angeles who talked like this. We shall take over the world. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the Optimus for uh, Michael Bay Phillips. I was just wondering what it was like returning to that role after such a long time. It was like putting on an old pair of comfortable shoes. Slip right into them and say, ah, I remember these. Why did I put them in the back of the closet? <laughs> I had no choice. <laughs> but you're still good in the dollar place. I don't know, I hope I answered your question. So it's a little bit of both. After a lot of jobs I didn't get and your reaction after everything that happens in that room in regards to the characters being in front of Yeah, you, you're talking about the, the first movie, right? Yes. Yeah, I think that's a movie where... <laughs> Frank and I were reading the script and uh, together we were in the green room or wherever we were. Yeah, let me just preface this a little bit by saying that I shouldn't tell everybody this, but what the heck, you know. 
we as actors, I mean, you, you imagine you slay over your scripts and just, you know, the night before and you work them up. Well, Peter and I never read the scripts till we get there. Because most of the time they're changing things all the time and we, you know, we don't want to get stale, we want to be, you know, fresh. And so we hadn't read the scripts, so. So I'm breezing through the script and I'm looking away and I get to about, oh, page 10. And I'm looking down the next line up. Optimus Prime takes deep breath and starts to gasp and dies. And I looked at hey Frank, <laughs> what page are you on? I said, go to page 10. <laughs> and I said, well, what's up here? He says, I'm getting smacked. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. And I think the second part of his question too was, how do you feel about what the middle-aged parents, when they were looking at that? Is that what you think is what, what parents felt when they saw what happened to you in the film? How did they feel? Well, if, if they could feel what I felt, they felt really bad. Now, I didn't cry, but I just looked at it and I said, gee, what not it? What did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, what the hell? Uh, I was very sad. Sounds like this. <laughs> Hello, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> Cybertron has shown us that chaos and devastation comes from greed and power. Ah, such pathetic nonsense. No one will stand in my way. Megatron, I will not allow you to succeed. One shall stand, one shall fall. So be it. Power through tyranny! I will never give up hope that one day we will all stand as one. Until then, Autobots, roll out! Thank you very much. And we're going to give it up one more time for Peter Cullen and Frank Walker. Thank you, Jack.
Amber here. Uh, I'm just doing a voiceover at the end of this video just because it's more easy to explain how exactly my trip to Edinburgh went. Now I know this vlog is extremely overdue and I'm very sorry I've been busy with college and battling illnesses and everything like that so everything has been all over the place for me so do forgive me for that please and also like editing other things for YouTube like my interviews and everything like that. But honestly Edinburgh Comic Con was one of the best Comic Cons I've ever done. I mean, it was worth the five hour drive. I met people like Jodie Benson, Jay McCarry, Roger L. Jackson, I mean, Peter Cullen and Frank Welker, just so many great people. And it was such a big venue, you know, all the space was utilized. Um, and it was just, it was in such a great environment. You know, you could just be yourself without having to worry about anyone judging you. I mean, I've had comments on Facebook saying that they saw me at the event and they saw how happy I was and that's what Comic Con's all about. And just to make people smile simply is just amazing, honestly. And meeting Frank and Peter was probably my favorite part of the event. They were so welcoming. They were so lovely, kind. They literally got up from their tables to come and see me as soon as they saw me for the first time. That was on a Saturday. And honestly, I could not have had a better weekend than how that went that weekend. The best part, I think, like, out of everything I did that weekend was literally just meeting Frank after, like, two years of not seeing him in person, only seeing him over video chat, and just every time we saw each other, we would point and smirk at each other, even if it was through the photo op curtain, or if I was going past his table, if he just caught me out of the corner of his eye, he would immediately catch on, and oh my gosh, he was so funny. And Peter was as well, like, I literally spent five minutes talking to him outside the photo op curtain, and I got to tell him more about myself, and everything along those lines, like my career, and he wished me luck, and oh my gosh, he was so sweet. And Frank uh, signed my script as well, so they were both really sweet. I mean, I haven't got as much of a friendship eye as I have with Frank, uh, for Peter, so I'm trying to build that up, you know, a little bit of, a, at a time. Honestly, really surreal, like, just at that moment. I just wish you could go back and relive memories because honestly it was really fun and I could have I could have I couldn't have not had a better time if that's the right saying <laughs> so with that I'll um I'll leave it there I'm sorry I didn't feel much I was mainly just living in the moment for it um well with that being said thank you for watching and take care I'll see you around bye <laughs>